Welcome to Elector Online. Here we're starting a new playlist, actually a continuation of an old playlist, to show you some additional examples of how to do triple integrals, because as some viewers have indicated, we didn't have very many examples. And I also thought there might be some other ways in which we can show you how to do triple integrals. And of course, we have three coordinate systems. We can use spherical coordinate system, we can use cylindrical coordinate systems, or we can use the Cartesian coordinate system. And of course, one system tends to be preferred over another depending upon the situation. So for this example, where we're going to find the volume of one eighth of a sphere, you might say, well, spherical coordinates may be the easiest, and by all means it is. But that doesn't mean you cannot solve that very same problem using cylindrical coordinates or using Cartesian coordinates. However, that will be much harder, but we're going to show you how to do that in the next videos. So we're going to start out with utilizing spherical coordinates since we are trying to find the volume of a spherical shaped object, even if it's a portion of that object. So here we're just going to do one eight of the total sphere. So notice we have another eight on the back side, two more on the other side on the left side, and four more on the bottom to form a complete sphere. Notice that the volume element dv can be defined as r squared sine of phi d phi d theta dr. So that would be representative of the volume element in spherical coordinates. And so if we're going to find the volume of that object, we need to do a triple integral over dv, and dv can be defined like this. Now the key, of course, is to put in the correct limits of integration for each of the three. So what we can do here is we can say, well, this is going to be equal to the integral over mm, d theta. Now d theta notices the angle here in the xy plane from the x-axis to where the projection goes down onto the xy plane. And so that's the angle d phi and we need to integrate over a quarter circle. So that would be from 0 to pi over 2. And then we are going to integrate the sine of phi times d phi, which is the projection from the z-axis downward. That's that angle, that's the phi angle. And um, notice that we would have to integrate also from 0 to pi over 2 as we go all the way from the vertical to the plane. So that would be the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of the sine of phi d phi. And then we're going to integrate over the radius. Now we have to go from the origin all the way out to the edge of the sphere or the 1 8 of a sphere. Notice that the radius of the sphere is r, so there we have r squared dr, and we integrate from 0 to r. And that's probably the easiest way to go ahead and do that. So the first thing we're going to do is integrate this. This stays the same, so this becomes the integral of d theta times the integral of the sine of phi d phi times, if we integrate r squared, we get r cubed over 3, and we go from 0 to r. And of course, when we plug in the lower limit, we get nothing. Plug in the upper limit, you get r cubed over 3. So this becomes... Hmm? No. So this becomes r cubed over 3 times the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of d phi, and then the integral from the sine of phi Oh, wait a minute, that's d theta. Don't want to get the wrong angle in there, d theta, the sine of phi d phi. And notice the integral, uh, limits of integration here is from 0 to pi over 2. So what is the integral of the sine? Well, the derivative of the sine is the positive cosine, so the integral of the sine is the negative cosine. So this becomes equal to r cubed over 3 times the integral of d theta from 0 to pi over 2. And then the integral of this is going to be the negative cosine of, uh, that would be t phi, and that goes from 0 to pi over 2. All right, so what is the cosine of pi over 2? 9 degrees, that's 0, and the cosine of 0 is 1, but we have to subtract that. So this becomes equal to r cubed over 3 times the integral of d theta from 0 to pi over 2. And then here we get, when we plug in the upper limit, we get minus 0. Minus, when we plug in the lower limit, we get a 1. Minus a minus 1, because we have the minus up here, so that would be minus 1, like this. 
and notice that becomes a plus one. So then we can continue up here. So now we can say that uh, one eight the volume of the sphere is equal to or now let's let's this gets confusing. I'll leave the one eight we'll worry about that later. The volume of that section of the sphere is equal to so we have r cubed over three. We now realize that this becomes a one, and all we have left now is the integral of d theta going from zero to pi over two. So when we integrate that, we get r cubed over three times theta evaluated from zero to pi over two. That, and of course, when we plug in the lower limit, we get nothing. Plug in the upper limit, you get this is equal to r cubed over 3 times pi over 2, which is equal to pi r cubed over 6. Now that happens to be exactly 1 8 of the volume of a whole sphere, so this is equal to 1 8, the volume of a sphere, which is 4 thirds pi r cubed. Notice when we multiply this together, we get 1 6 pi r cubed, which is exactly 1 8. Oop, I should make this a little bit bigger, like that. That's exactly 1 8 the volume of a sphere. So using spherical ordinates, this is not a difficult problem. Very straightforward. Now we're going to do the same problem using cylindrical coordinates, and now we're going to use the same problem using Cartesian coordinates. And then you can see that it really doesn't matter which coordinate system you use, you can use any one of the three. Of course, you probably prefer to use the one that's more appropriate. In this case, spherical coordinates is really the way to go. But just to show you that you can do this with any coordinate system, no matter what the problem is, if you're willing to fight through the more difficult portions of doing it the way it's, which is not the preferred way. All right, so we'll show you in the next several videos how to do it with the other coordinate systems. The very last thing, well, notice that I found the volume of one eighth of a sphere. Yeah. Oh, that's not even spelled right. <laughs> sphere, there we go. Um, and so this is what I found. So to show that this is indeed one eighth of the volume of a whole sphere, I showed you that that was equal to each other. So just to show that it's, the answer is correct. What am I doing? Yes, I just wanted to show that I did indeed find 1 8 the volume of a sphere.